presented by Phoenix Rising. Hi, Phoenix Rising here, and tonight we're going to be taking a look at the Psionics Aurora and seeing if we can use it with this, a PBS-14 Skull Crusher mount and J-Arm. Is it usable? Uh, can you modify it to make it work? We're going to find out. We are Borg. You and your cowbell will be assimilated. Ta-da! <laughs> okay, sorry I had to throw that in there. Just, uh, just kind of looks ridiculous. Makes me reminds me of the Star Trek Borg episodes. Uh, anyway, so right now we have our Psionics Aurora mounted in a standard J-Arm, standard Skull Crusher. No modifications to anything. Okay, uh, just to tighten it up and put it on. Now. Is this workable? Uh, kind of, sort of, but maybe not nearly optimal. And, it, and a lot of this is going to depend on your facial structure, okay? Now, the big problem or the issue you're going to have with using the Aurora and a standard J arm is that the mounting bolt for the Aurora is in line with the axis of the lens and the view screen, okay? When you look at a PVS 14, it's not, it's actually offset to the side. So your Aurora is going to sit farther out on your face to the outboard side, regardless of which side you swing this thing to. And that could pose some problems depending on your inner pupillary distance, if I said that right, distance between your eyeballs, okay? Now, pupil to pupil, when I tried to measure mine, I came up with about three inches uh, for, for distance between them. <clears throat> In doing that, when I mount this Aurora, using all this just standard hardware and tighten everything up, what I have to do is I have to angle the Aurora so that the view screen is close enough to my eye for me to be able to, to look through and see, okay? And that's kind of problematic. Uh, first off, uh, right now I'm looking straight ahead at the camera with this eye. If I go to center the Aurora's view, you can tell that I am now, now I have the camera centered in the Aurora's view. And you can tell I'm actually looking off to the side. So let's take a look at this uh, a little better. Maybe up close, I'll hold it out here uh, just to show you. So, so see, how, see how this is canted? Okay, right now I'm holding this vertical, or as near to vertical as I can. Look at the angle you have on this Aurora. So you're going to have to... So you're going to have to turn your head <laughs> that much to be able to look straight ahead. Now, I mentioned inner pupil distance uh, and mine's three inches. Now, if you have a wider head or your eyes are wider set, say three and a half inch, your eye's gonna be farther out. You're not gonna have as severe an angle on this as I'm having, okay? Conversely, if your pupils, if you're one of these people whose eyes are set fairly close together or closer together than what mine are, this is gonna be even worse, okay? So that's the issue you're going to have. Uh, I don't know if three inches is average. You'll have to ask your opto optometrist. If anybody out here watching this is an optometrist, hey, if you know what the average distance is or the range, let me know. I'd be interested to hear. I'm kind of curious. So uh, there you have it. That's, that's just using standard off-the-shelf hardware. Now, there's another issue uh, that you're going to have, and that's going to be where this, see how easy that wiggle, and I have this tightened down good and solid, okay? So... Even if you don't want to do the, any other modifications, uh, one thing I would say you probably want to do is there's a little ridge on your the bottom of your PVS-14 J-arm that's designed to fit a divot on the body of your PVS-14 to keep it aligned true. Uh, I would dedicate a J-arm to this psionics. You're going to need to if you're going to want to do some other modifications I'm going to show you here in a minute. But I would at least grind this off uh, so that you have a full flush mounting surface to kind of steady it better and that seems to work okay. And then you might even want to, uh, if you don't want to do an alignment pin kind of setup, and, I'm, and I'll we'll talk about that later on too, uh, I would at least grind this flat so you have a better mating surface. Maybe put some uh, a rubber coating or contact cement, some rubber on here 
uh, thin rubber sheet to help steady your Aurora where it won't shift on you as you're out in the field. So uh, that's it for using the standard J-arm. Now, uh, we'll do like again, if you want to go farther into this rabbit hole and make a better mounting system, I'll show you what I did. This is my modified J-arm and I did several things to it. I gutted all the wiring out of it for use with a standard PBS-14. Originally I put a mounting pin in it, uh, which I got away from because I did it perfectly wrong, and I'll tell you about that if you're interested when we get to making this if you later on if you want to stick around for that. Uh, so this is highly modified. It's been The shape's been changed to bring the Aurora in and get it closer to a natural alignment with this PVS 14 rig. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on here and uh, show it to you. And then again, if this seems like something that you might be interested in doing, then uh, then just keep watching, and we'll and we'll, and we'll I'll show you what I did in, in, in better detail uh, down the road here. Let me get this thing to turn back on. Oh, okay, okay. So here we have the Aurora and. We'll do that. I don't know if I did the other 180 turn, turn, whatever. Uh, now we have the Aurora with my modified J arm, and uh, and if you'll notice, right now I am looking directly at the camera, and just a little bit of movement here is all I need to center center it in my vision. Okay, so it's a much more natural natural viewing angle. You don't have any weird head thing going on here, and. Uh, and it's, to me, this is pretty doable. Okay, I, I wouldn't have a problem walking around outside with this. Now, there is one other issue that if you're if you're wanting to use the Aurora in a head mount, that's going to be very different than a PVS-14, and that is a PVS-14. You have unity between the PVS-14's field of view and your eye's natural field of view. So, uh, right now, I'm in a lit room or a room where there's ambient lighting so I can see with both and it kind of messes with your head because the Aurora's view is is wider so th objects are smaller it's kind of like the difference between your mirror on the left side of your car and the mirror on the right side where where your everything's kind of shrunken down and objects are closer than they appear blah 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 same sort of a deal here everything's smaller in my viewfinder so my eyes don't have unity and if you're someplace where you're using it or you have to switch back and forth because things brighten up or whatever, it's going to mess with your head some. Okay, so just be aware of that, that there is a little bit of a caveat there. Now, I'll show you the bottom on this uh, modified G-arm, and you can see I'm holding this perpendicular or, or vertical, and you can see there's very little angular deflection. Okay, if my... If my eyes were just a, a little bit wider set apart, it'd be in perfect alignment, uh, just like a PVS-14 would. Uh, that being said, I can there, there's you might be able to slip a credit card between the bottom of the mount and the Aurora. So really, I couldn't take this any farther if I needed to uh, in modifying the way this thing sits, unless I wanted to. Uh, that and I'm almost contacting right here, so I'd have to shave plastic to get anything more out of it. So I'm reaching reach what I feel are the limits of modification on this J-arm. Now, again, if I had wider set eyes, I wouldn't have to bend it uh, as much as I did, or, and it would be a better alignment, but, uh, but that's going to vary based on you. So uh, if you want to use an Aurora with, with a PBS-14 mounting system, the way I would look at it is this, is first I would measure your inner pupil distance and if you're like two and a half inches then I would say it's probably going to be so, it's going to be a more extreme than what I showed you for angular on a non-modified setup and even if you modify it like I did which is a bit of a pain in the butt, okay, I'm going to be honest, then you're still going to have a greater angular deflection. Uh, it would be workable, but you're going to have a much more difficult time. Conversely, if you have more than three inches, the wider from three inches you have, the better off you're going to be. If you are one of these people that have, you know, maybe, I don't know, three and three quarter inches, 
you probably would just be a, could get away with a standard J-arm and skull crusher and, uh, and be perfectly fine because you're going to have a very little deflection in the first place. wouldn't be even worth it to try and do a mod or anything. So there you have it. There's my take on using the PVS-14 uh, skull crusher JR mounting system on a Psionics Aurora. Okay, so uh, here we are. If you're still with me, that means you're interested in possibly doing a modification to a J-Arm for use with the Psionics Aurora. So let's go dive right into it. We'll talk about the original J-Arm, uh, show you a little bit about that, then we'll get on to the mods. And uh, that way, if, you're, if you do want to do this, then hopefully uh, you'll have uh, the results that you want and uh, things will work out for you. So first off, before we get into any of this, uh, what I want to say is this, is I talked about the distance between my pupils measuring at three inches. And what I will say is before you really do anything, I would go ahead and uh, measure that distance or have a loved one measure that distance so you can get a feel for what direction and how far you're going to need to go, okay? <clears throat> for me with a three inch measurement, what I found was this, okay, uh, three inches Again, this thing sits farther out than a standard PVS-14, and here's why. Mount hole is on the center line of the glass here on a PVS-14. The mounting hole is about a half an inch offset, and that half an inch brings it closer towards the center of your face uh, compared to the Aurora. So I'm just going to simulate this, and if this was locked in, when I was looking with this thing lined up straight, I was actually looking directly at the edge of the rubber eyepiece right here. So if this was my pupil right here, in order for me to get it to where I could see out of the Aurora, I had to rotate it about to here, okay, for me to be able to see here, okay, for me to be able to see. Now you look at this kind of an angle, right, this being a... Uh, if I can get this to where the camera can see it level, uh, you look at that, and there you go. That's that's a heck of an angle. To me, that was uh, enough of an irritation that I thought this isn't going to cut it for me. Okay, and that's with my three inch pupil to pupil distance. Now, if my pupil to pupil distance was four inches, right, that would be about another half inch shifted out. Guess what? If my if this was a half an inch shifted out for me, I'm I'm back to almost normal, right? What I had to do with a corrected one. So. If you if you measure your eyes and you're at like a, closer to four inches, you're really you're not going to have to do hardly anything to make this a good usable solution for you. By the same token, if you're less than three inches, that means you're in a worse spot than I was. Yeah, you're going to want to do this. And if you're much less than that, like maybe I don't know two. I don't can't see anybody maybe with two inches aside from a kid. But if you're two and a half inches. You're going to want to do this, and this is still going to be a little bit off. So, uh, again, all considerations you should think about before you jump into this. So let's go ahead and take this back off. Oh, I did want to show you one other thing. Now, I've got this tightened down good, as about as tight as I dare to tighten it. And, I mean, this is really easy to come loose and move, okay? And the reason for that is this little ridge if I can get it to where it shows up on the camera here, this little ridge that sticks up, you're riding on that and just the edge of the plastic over here, uh, over here, uh, because that ridge is there to fit this little divot on your PVS-14 to lock it sturdy in place. So no matter what, if you're going to use the Aurora, you're going to need to take a Dremel and grind at least at a minimum grind this little ridge off so that you get a good flat mounting surface that the Aurora can bite onto and and to be honest I, I did an alignment pin then I got rid of it I didn't feel it was necessary I'll, I'll give you a couple parameters on that if you feel you need an alignment pin in there for some reason but I don't think you need it but you do need to get rid of this little ridge okay so enough said about your standard PVS 14 mount now let's talk about our modified mount. Okay, the biggest thing with this modification is you're going to need to gut the wiring out of it, take all that out, including what's up inside the uh, underneath this cover plate in your front, and your 
your front and you're going to have to use a uh, heat gun like that you would use for stripping paint uh, not a blow dryer but an actual heat gun a heat gun and you're going to want to get this plastic hot enough that you can deform it hold it let it cool a little bit and reshape this to get you to the desired position that you want and this is going to be not just a one-time wham bam do it the, i took me five or six adjustments maybe even a little more before i was satisfied with where this was and how this was working okay uh and you got to take it slow i i can't stress that enough because it's, it's it's easy to screw this up if you uh get it too hot or, or deform the wrong thing then you're, you're going to have a less than desirable outcome so let's go ahead and take a look first at how much I changed the uh, how this was set up and we'll go ahead and I don't know which way is better for me to do here I guess we'll flip it around this way uh, this will be looking at the front of the unit as, as, as it's mounted in here and so let me go ahead and get this to where you can the camera can see it good on the left here's your standard PVS 14 mount and on the right is my modified mount now if you'll notice a uh, big big difference okay uh, the, there's really there's two bends that you're going to have to do here and the first one is up top here coming right off of this boss and I took all this extra mounting hardware off to do this by the way and I We're off to do this by the way and I also had a vise at my disposal that I locked things down in so so vise pair of channel locks and a heat gun okay and a heat gun okay Allen heads to take this stuff apart now so the first bend I did was right here out the gate where this is uh, coming off at maybe a 20 degree down angle I went ahead and bent that downwards by about 40 to 45 degrees as close as I could get to here without disturbing this mounting boss and this collar because you've got a bolt that runs or a locking pin that runs through all this and this all has to tighten down and line up or else this is trash okay so you got to be careful there but so the first bend was to take this and bend it down again you can see it kind of comes out with a shoulder and down right and change this angle by about 45 degrees downward so downward. so there's your first bend okay now once I did that with the original profile now you get this coming down here now look at the mounting angle of, of what your Aurora would be so now you have to correct this way downward almost vertical or side angle on your mounting plate so now you have to take your mounting plate here and bend that back up to get it to a proper angle so and there you there you go I mean you can see how much of a if I hold those two flat uh, you can see how much of a bend you had to have down at the bottom so let me see if I, I'm going to try and get a really good profile of this so you can see the final shape that I ended up having so there's the final shape and if I can get this to where I can hold this right again just for comparison it's hard to get everything lined up for the camera so again that's uh, that's an awful lot of shifting A lot of shifting so uh, that's what you're going to need to do uh, like I said you got to be careful here and I did take the, all this boss stuff off of here pull the wiring and everything out uh, then I also when I did the bottom I actually clamped this whole portion in the vise to make sure that my mounting plate did not distort and get any bends on it because then you're going to have issues with uh, not being able to hold the Aurora steady so let's go ahead and let's put this uh, put the mounting solution we have here on here if I can uh, da, 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 yeah that's the right way so I can just kind of show you uh, how well this thing works so once I had this on here again there there's there's true and for me I had to actually still move it just a few degrees about like that uh, 
for, for it to be right for me. And I could kind of compensate and shift the skull crusher just a little bit to make that perfect. But that was why I had to get rid of my alignment pin because I still needed to shift it even when everything else was done. Uh, that being said, the bends that I have in this one are about as far as you're going to want to go because I'm virtually touching the side here. And I'm also, without removing metal or metal or plastic here, I, I'm, I'm almost touching there. So I'm, 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 I would be hard pressed to actually get any more bending out of this. But once I... out of this but once I tighten this down you can see I'm flexing plastic but I'm not really moving the Aurora and if you did get any movement again just a little bit of a, a, a rubber compound or something like that would should be enough to hold this all in place so there you have it psionics Aurora and a PVS 14 modified mount Okay, for those who do wish to install an alignment pin, first know that it's optional and not really needed. But the first step is line up some tape where your alignment pin hole is, marking it out so you can mark your J-arm. Once your Aurora is marked, install your J-arm, put it in the skull crusher, line everything up the way you're going to wear it, then mark your uh, J-arm with a silver pen for where you need to drill. The next step is going to be drilling out your J arm using a 1 8 inch bit ream the hole just enough so that you can install your screw into the hole and thread it in. The screw we used was a number 8 32 thread pitch machine screw trimmed to 0.4 inches or if you're using metric that would be a, a 4 millimeter an M4 screw trimmed to about 11 millimeters of thread length. Uh, that should give you just enough bite to get a good uh, fit into the alignment pinhole without over travel. One other thing I did want to mention is that I used a pan head screw with a very shallow head because this thing's going to be slightly up under your knurled knob to lock down the Aurora. So make sure you get a shallow headed screw. And finally to top it off, even though I did thread into the plastic, I went ahead and added some epoxy to really lock things down in place. And that's it. That's all there is to putting in an alignment pin. I hope you enjoyed this video on using a Psionics Aurora with a PVS-14 Skull Crusher mount. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. This video took a lot of time and effort to produce, and while it's free to download for personal or educational use, please link and give credit. Commercial use of this video is expressly forbidden without my written consent. Thanks for watching. Copyright 2020 by Phoenix Rising